when I started, I called them, they were pretty crusty, crusty volunteers, you know, the ones that are like a bit brittle. <laughs> You know, go stand at the door, welcome people in, bring them to a seat, but that's all they do. And I used to tell my volunteers this, the door can hold itself. It does not need you to stand there. <laughs> so, so good. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not trying to help you grow in numbers. I'm trying to help you grow in vision. And I think that's the difference, right? I feel like our volunteers in most churches are the most unthanked and overutilized. So by the time a guest arrives in a parking lot and they turn off their car, so the ignition is off, in three to five minutes, they decide if they're coming back. Wow. Yeah. So that's before the pastor. Wow. That's before worship starts. I mean, wow. it might be late, but yeah. And so I would always tell my, my clients and my teams, like you set that, like you actually create the experience of people wanting to come back or not. What's up, my friends, amigos, aficionados de la fe? My name is Beto Gudiño, and today we have an amazing episode because we're going to discover how can churches be more friendly and welcoming and why is that important for a church, right? So if you're interested in this topic, we have an expert today on the episode, Deb Ritman. But before we do that, I want to introduce you to a very special person who's sitting next to me, which is my wife, Mili, because it's her second time on the show. And we're going to do this more often. That's what we want to do. We want to be a team. We right, are Millie? a team, Beto. We already <laughs> do it in Spanish. And I said, why not? We, we got to melt in like this, like English and Latino Anglo. It's like, let's break that a little bit. I don't like when it's like, oh, just the English Use the Latino. Uh uh. I want to bring it to use our Spanglish. <laughs> I can join the Spanglish. <laughs> Sweet. Mm, nice. Okay, Emily. So, I mean, why don't you say hi and then introduce us to Deb, maybe how we met or something like that? Well, my name is Miriam Gudino, but, you know, my closest friends call me Millie. My family call me Millie. So, yo, please call me Millie. <laughs> Millie it is. <laughs> yes. So, Deb. You yeah. don't know this, but I met you 10 years ago. Did I? Oh, yes. Uh, <gasps> you don't know that, but I used to go to Rod Harbor. Oh, my. You know, and, and your personality, it's like so beautiful and your smile yes. and I never forget about your face. Mm. So two weeks, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we met at um, West Side West Nights, Nights party. The event with throw every month and you introduce yourself to me but like i love you i know you <laughs> you know like yeah it was so much fun and yeah so beto told me about this you know and it's a pleasure for oh, us wow to have you over i never imagined beto this is like a dream come true you know nice. like because 10 years ago it was so hard for me to communicate yeah. like having zero english so, oh my gosh. yeah, just, you know, God has been working and all my English come from, from the street, from church, gangsta. from my friends. Gangsta English. So, you please yeah. forgive me if I'm not super correct, but I, one day I will go to school. Yeah. It's great. Like, it was a homie. I learned my English in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> right, Millie? It's like if you move to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. From zero. For sure. And you pick up the English, you know, you just need to, I mean, the Spanish, you just need to practice. So, yes. yeah. so I got to say, I took Spanish in high school. And yeah. when I went to Mexico, the first time I literally brought a dictionary and told myself, I am only speaking Spanish. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only way. And it was the best. By like two weeks, I was by no means fluent, but I caught on mm. pretty quick. Where but did you, you go? Make yourself. I was in Nogales. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nogales. Just Sonora. right across the border. Mm -hmm. Sweet. But yeah. That's so cool. Anyways. Good job. I'm a it's little bit here. like you because like Millie said, you know, she met you 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you my story. It doesn't necessarily mean that. No, whatever. I'm just <laughs> going to say my story. If you relate. Okay. <laughs> right. But my story is that <laughs> one of the, the husband of our teachers or of our kids teacher. Okay. Right? So the husband, uh, we met him a few times. And every time I saw him, I introduced myself to him. <laughs> and then by the fourth time, he's like, hey, I'm Beto. And he's like, hey, I'm Mr. Messner. And then I was like, oh. Like, finally, it got it, to me. Like, 
I think no, I think I've lived this before. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think he was just like, uh, you know. <laughs> but here's the thing: he fools me, but because if you wear a hat and then the next time you wear no hat or yeah. things like that, I'm, I'm I totally you no. Know, this you disguise yourself and <laughs> you could be a brand new person for me. That's how I am. So, anyways, that's just me. But let's kick it off this episode with an emoji. Oh, Deb. So. I guess we have five emojis. Yes. And we're going to go to the belief-o-meter today. The belief-o-meter. Belief-o-meter. Okay. Right? So out of the five emojis, yeah. we want to see how you're feeling today. Ooh. So go to the belief-o-meter. <laughs> and the emoji of the day is inspired. Inspired. Emoji. So good. I love it. Deb, so... I mean, why why do you feel inspired? Why is that related maybe to... Is it today you feel inspired or in general do you feel like that you relate to the inspired emoji? That's a great question. One, I just want to be inspiring. Mm. Um, and so if I have a choice, I will always choose to be inspired. Maybe not that red crazy man that's up there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, I would love to live an inspiring life. And I also believe the topic we're talking about is inspiring because we can all play a part. It's not a one man show. Mm. Mm, that's so good. All right. So there we go. There it is. Inspire. So I love it. That's how we're feeling today. And So 10 years ago, like Millie said, I we met at that. Rock Harbor. And Rock Harbor, for the people that are not familiar, right? Because people tune into this from everywhere. Yeah. Like all around the world. And it's a, it's a church in Costa Mesa, California. It's been around for maybe 25 years, something It like is. that. 20, right? Yep, 25, 25 years. They just had a 25-year anniversary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was younger hearing about you know, the launch of the church and whatnot, And anyways, it's one of those churches that really impacts the culture that has ministries globally. Yep. Right. You go to Mexico. They have ministries in India, ministries all over pretty much town and here. So anyways, great church. And that's what we met you. And why I brought that up is because you were kind of like on the welcoming team. And yeah. that's super related to what you do now. So It I, I is. Guess the first question is like, I mean... What is it that you do now? Just introduce us to, you know, what is Deb Ritman Consulting or just that, and then we'll go backwards okay. and say, how did you get there? Love that. Okay. So Deb Ritman Consulting is totally from Jesus. I was given this idea in 2019. Um, and what I do is I love to help churches. I feel like the church should be the most friendliest place that we go. Mm. And a lot of times it's not um, because we kind of get into our own groove or our own systems and we don't see things that might be missing. And so um, I basically started this company, my company, um, with the heart to help churches. And the belief is that that really begins first and foremost with your volunteers because your volunteers are your first impression of what your church is about. So anybody that walks through the doors, um, are, they're going to meet your volunteers. And so my heart is, do your volunteers know that they're important? Mm -hmm. And do they know the vision of the church? Do they understand why we're here, what we're doing? And so um, I go into churches and I kind of do like a secret shopper weekend and mm -hmm. I become a guest, which nice. yeah, it's so fun. There's nothing better. Um, and it's literally from like website, social media, parking lot, all of it. I arrive as a guest and then I just wander in. And so from announcements to signage, do I know where to go? How's the bathroom, you guys? Mm, Sometimes so the bathrooms important. are... Listen, wow. it is. It's like in the restaurants. It is. You know, I hate... Like, <laughs> it's a beautiful restaurant. The food is We great. We don't hate. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a It's sinner. Okay. <laughs> and and you use the restroom. Yeah. Ugh. And if they're dirty. I'm not coming again. Uh-huh. No I'm soap. not coming again. It's an issue. Bye. I know. Yes. There it is. So uh, all of that, um, a lot of times I pretend that I have children and I'll go into the kids area. Mm. There's been really crazy times where sometimes I'll just walk in and they don't stop me, which warning, that's not okay. Um, oh, okay. And then I had another um, time where I walked in and it was like they were 
on me and I had to call a client and say, (laughs) hey, if you don't tell your staff that I'm the secret shopper you guys hired, like I'm literally getting handcuffed off of this property. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) So, and that's great because you want to, I just kind of check every single area. So your kids, your youth, how is it just the feel in the lobby? And then once you're inside in the sanctuary, and then I always look for what's my next step. If I'm new, then what are you calling me to? Um, and so after I do a secret shopper weekend, then I'll give the church a full report of like, Hey, this was my experience. This was great. And I do a whole graph chart for them to say like, these were awesome. And then this might need a little attention. Mm. And then after I do that, I give them an option because the two areas that I will then focus on is, um, your volunteers and staff and really the staff is the ones who train your volunteers. So it's, it goes hand in hand, but I'll always say I'm here to help your volunteers um, just training, understanding like what's your church's vision? What are you guys about? And do your volunteers know that? And are they carrying the torch for you? And then the second part that I go on is all your behind the scenes. So basically, if I click on your website and it says, email me here if you want information, like is that link correct? Or like what do they get in response? What does your email say? Um, what's your step by step? The you know, the tag phrase right now is assimilation. So what's your assimilation process? How can I help you? From start to finish, from guest arrival to I am connected and this is my church, how do we get people there? So that's mm. that's what I do. Love it. It's so fun. <coughs> Millie, I have so many so, questions, but yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering if you have anything like right off the bat. No, like, I love it. I, I, I think, you know, churches are like a nonprofit. Yeah. It's a company, mm-hmm. you know, and that's why Disney is so successful. Yeah. Because they're so excellent in all that areas you were mentioning i mean they're super clean the parking lot like it's huge but you you know where to go right away you know like Mm -hmm. the transportation if you're super far like they have their buses yes you know to bring you over the point where you need to go and like the lines are fast you know to enter the, the the place like now with covid like how they look for everything you know mm-hmm. on your backpacks and, yeah and when you ended up like okay we're done like 11 p.m and you have a satisfaction like oh my gosh you had a wonderful experience because everything is so organized and everybody who works there are happy yeah happiest you know? place on earth uh-huh. the uh-huh. hpoe so like yeah <laughs> No, it's true. I used to always say, like, why is it that you can go to Walmart and they wear the, like, how may I help you, like, mm-hmm, uniform, mm-hmm. and you can walk them to church and they don't even make eye contact with you. Mm. Um, so it's true. It's like your experience makes you want to go back. If people have a good experience, I mean, you're right. D- that's why people want to go to Disney. It's like you're kind of taken care of as well as entertained. Mm. And I want to just uh, read up scripture, Beto, in John thirteen twenty. I tell you the truth. Anyone who welcomes Mm -hmm. my messenger is welcome me. And anyone who welcomes me is welcome the father. So for me, it's like, especially in church. Are you kidding me? It's like whatever person enter one step on church, Mm -hmm. you need to think, okay, Jesus is coming. Yeah. You know? Yeah. How you will treat him. Yeah. With love, with respect, you know, like 100%. my name is, yes. and introduce yourself and give a hug. That's, that's, that's me. Yeah. Pretty much. No, it's true. Right. But it, we, it's a command. Mm-hmm. It is a command. It's so strong. Yeah. Not a suggestion. No, it's a command. It's a command. Wow, I love that. that. I love that. Um, so I guess, uh, I like to, I mean, for me, my emoji is a little bit, not all the time, right? But in this case, we'd be maybe skeptical. Okay. Uh, not in a bad way, but we're from Mexico, yeah. right? So when I think of some of the churches in Mexico, I think some are replicating a little bit of the the process of welcoming people with, I would say, maybe marketing strategies, right? And mm. I think it's, it's nice because people are, we're evolving, we're being educated, we want to welcome people, we want to use our knowledge of science and whatever it is into you know, welcoming people, right? But I've also experienced churches that not necessarily have any of those things, right? It's, I mean, it's a, maybe a mission church somewhere in a little town in Mexico. And I'm, yeah. I'm just saying where I'm from, right? But I'm sure it happens here in America too. And I would say maybe sometimes some of the churches can feel a little bit of like, um, 
oh, it's I don't have the I don't have the 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 spectacle to welcome people. Like I, I don't have maybe the Disney budget to welcome people, you know, with fireworks and lights and smoke <laughs> and you know, make it an amazing. I feel like I tend to like that, you know, because when I see a spectacle, I'm like, wow, somebody's behind this and somebody meant to transfer uh, some emotions to me, hmm. right? So I think in a sense, the church is trying to do that. Like it's not just the welcoming, right? So I guess my my word is, how are we sure that what we are providing is authentic Yeah. versus we're just doing it because it's a strategy to have people on the seats? 100%. Right? I will always say to my client at the beginning, I don't do this for numbers. Mm. So I'm not trying to help you grow in numbers. I'm trying to help you grow in vision. And I think that's the difference, right? Where if you actually, so my thing is, is imagine two churches, right? Like you have a group of people who are told what to do, you know, go stand at the door, welcome people in, bring them to a seat. You got all the glitz and the glitter, but that's all they do versus a group of people. And I used to tell my volunteers this, the door can hold itself. It does not need you to stand there. <laughs> so, so good. <laughs> yeah, the door can hold itself. So if you see somebody go to them, Mm. And, you know, by the end of my time at Rock Harbor, they would, they could all say it. They all <laughs> laughed. They're like, we know, Deb, the door holds itself. I'm like, it does. It doesn't need you, but people do. Wow. And so, so you have, let's say, a, a perfect from the outside glitz and glam lights. People are in the right spot versus a group of people who have been trained in the fact of like, you are literally Jesus's hands and feet today. Mm. So the how you interact with people, literally, I mean, 10 years ago, the fact that you remembered is also so sweet, but I'm like, praise God, because truly it was impactful at some point, you know, and that's what I wanted my team to be is like, Hey, be warm, be welcoming. Like I used to tell them all the time, like we change the culture of a church. So your people, if they know why they're standing there, like, Hey, my job today is to be Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's it. So if I have that in my head, which we should, we should, come to every day that way, right? <laughs> like I should be Jesus to people every day. But specifically when I'm standing in this doorway, they better meet Jesus in some way or fashion. Mm. So is it my smile? Is it my hug? Is it my engagement with you? Is it that I took the time to see that you were lost and confused? So I walked up to you and I led you to the bathroom or I brought you to a seat. Like how we care for people is an interaction of Jesus. And I think that's where you get the authentic. Like if I'm empowered to to know like, hey, I have permission to go out of my spot that I don't have to stand here or I am being called to be the welcoming hands and feet of Jesus. How much more inspiring, how much more like authentic is that of like, oh, like this is my job. Like that's what I'm supposed to do versus like, okay, thanks for being here at 8.15 and make sure you say hi to everybody and pass out a bulletin. Like that's mm. just not inspiring. Um, or off. It's just, it's not authentic, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I love it. So, uh, I mean, the word vision that you use, it's it's so interesting because basically you were saying it's not about the numbers necessarily, Nope. but how to grow your vision. So, I mean, I would love for you to elaborate a little bit on what is, what, what do you mean by vision? Like where, where have you witnessed churches grow their vision that you can say it looks like this? Yeah. Right? Yeah. A lot of churches, I think we all kind of want to go to the same spot, right? Like we want our church to be the place that people feel like they're home, really. Like I think at the end of the day, I would hope that that's what most most churches want. Some yeah. just want to be cool, you know, mm. um, or they only want their people. But hopefully at the end of the day, it's a place that's home for people. Mm. Now, how you get there is kind of up to each church, right? So, um. I, I will always ask a church, like, what's your mission? What's your vision statement? So I think, I mean, I still remember Rock Harbors. We're a church of communities following Jesus as we worship, pray, and love others. So I would break that down with my team. This is our vision. Like, we want to pray and love others and worship together. Like, that. that's what we're here for. So how can you do that today? So you see somebody sad, like, the vision then is, like, go pray for them. Mm. The same Holy Spirit lives in you. Mm -hmm. um, 
invite people to worship with you. If they look alone or you have friends that are coming, have them sit with you, worship, be in community together. How do we love one another? I mean, it is truly loving. I know we laughed about it, but to have a clean bathroom, that's loving, right? Like Mm. when you have people come over to your house, you clean your house. Oh, yes. So it's the same thing. And that's because you love and you want to care and you want them to feel at home. And so the vision is what, what do you guys want this to feel like? How do you want people to leave? Um, do you want them to come back? Then we set, your volunteers set that tone. Mm. Because this is my favorite statistic. I learned it in college and it was, so by the time a guest arrives in a parking lot and they turn off their car, so the ignition is off, in three to five minutes, they decide if they're coming back. Wow. Yeah. So that's before the pastor. Wow. That's before worship starts. I mean, they might be late, but yeah. And so I would always tell my, my clients and my teams, like you set that, like you actually create the experience of people wanting to come back or not. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where it again, changes your whole mentality of like why I'm here. Like, oh, it's what I do. I'm just serving my church versus like, I want people to meet Jesus and I want them to feel like this is home Mm. and I want them to come back. That's I, last, so good. Last week, um, two weeks ago, I went to Canopy. Oh, you did? Just to visit. Love. You know? And I was there like, oh my gosh. Canopy is the church where currently you attend, right? Yep. Okay. And so, I'm part-time staff. Uh, like, nice. Mm-hmm. I feel home. Yeah. Oh my, it, really? You know what? You're, everything you're saying <laughs> right now, I came home <laughs> with my kids. I, I, I just mm. brought my sister-in-law and two best friends. Okay, Love e, it. so I came home and I beto. She was the secret it's shopper. It's so funny. <laughs> yes, it's so funny because I fell home. Hmm. And like, oh my gosh, here my family. Look, my son Jude Pastor. You know? Yeah. And oh, oh, look, here's with the people I work together in Westside mm-hmm. Nights. Like, I was not new there. Yeah. I was not invited there. No, it, I I felt like this is home. Can I ask why? Like, what are specific things that made it feel like home? Because they pray for me. Okay. You know, Mm -hmm. like, I I feel the love. Okay, this church care about me. Yeah. You know, my burdens, like, whatever is going on, like, and so Mm. much love. And then the other part is, like, I recognize so many faces. Yeah. And... um, People who don't know me reach out to me. Mm. Just like, hi. Yeah. You know, like... I don't know if they're a staff or no, yeah. but so welcoming everybody. You Love know? that. Yes. And nice. because I used to go to Rod Harbor, it's like, oh, this is like a mini Rod Harbor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, that's pretty true. So, yeah. Love that's it. That's good. Okay. So I think you, you moved me from skeptical to holy. I think I'm oh. in the holy territory. <laughs> and that's great because I, I feel like... Getting better. I mean, yeah. you were saying basically welcoming... It, people to your home mm-hmm. and to me that's holy territory come on right it is it's relationship mm-hmm. and what i love also is that you mentioned the holy spirit right so I, I think that brings me a little bit to the what i wanted to to ask you right from the beginning is how did you get here because i feel like um your your passion is i mean it seems super sincere like it's about jesus it right is. and yeah how did you get there? Because I think for even for, I don't know, maybe you have experienced this, but um, I think for some churches, I'm not going to say all, but maybe just my experience. I think for some churches, it's not really about Jesus. <laughs> right? It's have true. you experienced that? Have oh, you experienced it's so that? true. Yes, <laughs> right? it is. Okay. So how did you get to, to Jesus? Like what brought you to Jesus that you said, I want people to feel welcome. Like you talk about Holy Spirit and it seems like deep, and so if you were maybe convincing people even to say, look for a church, why would you say that you want that for people? Like what, what's your own story in, in yeah. relationship to finding Jesus or knowing Jesus? I love that. I would say probably my, and I didn't even realize this until a couple of years ago. This is how Jesus works, isn't it? Yes. But so my dad's a pastor. Mm. He planted a church three months before I was born. And so um, basically I've been in church since I was a newborn, but the way that that church, it was called Oak Grove. It's in Milwaukee, Oregon, shout out. <laughs> um, but, um, that church honestly represented the Acts 2 church. And, but what I mean by that is 
it truly felt like family. Mm. You know, we went to weddings and funerals and we were always together. And it just, my memory of that church was like, I was so known and I was so loved at Mm. that church. And when we moved, we still kept up with those people and we still do to this day. It's still like weddings and funeral, all of it still Christmas cards. And if I'm ever in town and I see them, it's just like, I want to see them. Right. It's like, Oh, I, I want to see those people again. Um, so that started it of, I thought every church felt like that where it was like, everyone's known, everyone's yeah. welcome. You can't wait to get to church and you don't want to leave. Like that's kind of what I thought. That's not true. (laughs) So when we moved and then, you know, through my life, just going to different churches, it was like, man, like we, what we had there was so special. And we Mm. all say that, like, I, I really haven't experienced another church that's like that. It was Mm. incredible. And so fast forward to when I started at Rock Harbor in 2013, um, Side tangent, I had gone there. So I was actually a high school teacher in Huntington for four years. And so I went to Rock Harbor as an attendee from 07 Mm. to 2011. And it changed my walk with Jesus. It was very much like in tune with the Holy Spirit and it felt like home and I was really involved. Well, I had left for a couple of years. And when I came back just to visit, it was a totally different experience. Um, And it really wasn't that welcoming and it wasn't that friendly. Mm. And so... Um, the pastor that hired me, he had said like, you're the woman for the job. Like we want you and we want you to help build a culture again at Rock Harbor. And I was like, okay. And it's funny you said the Holy Spirit. Honestly, <laughs> people used to ask like, how did you change? Like, how did it change? Like what books did you go, like read or what conferences did you go to? And honest to God, I used to just like kneel beside my bed and be like, Jesus, how am I supposed to do this? Like, this is hard. Like, People are in their ruts. They're not friendly. Like, how am I supposed to rally people? And it was literally me just sitting with Jesus and like asking him to like, help me. What am I supposed to do? So it was putting on events and hanging out with every single volunteer. Um, When I started, I called them, they were pretty crusty, crusty volunteers. You know, the ones that are like a bit brittle. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And I was like, oh, Jesus, what? how help me here. And basically just started praying literally praying people out and praying people in Mm. and so when i start with a client i will always say we need to pray for the right people at the right time because you don't want worn out volunteers and you don't want burnt out volunteers you don't want crusty volunteers you want people who are passionate and in wow it's better to have two of those than 20 of the crusties so wow (laughs) yeah (laughs) That's so good. (laughs) Right? It's true though. And so I really, it started with me just praying, honestly, and asking Jesus, like, help me do this. How am I supposed to do this? And it really was one relationship at a time, just investing in people, meeting people, and then saying, hey, like, why don't you come join our team? Like, are you looking for community? Like, you'll have, I used to say, you'd have Insta friends. Like, we're all going to be your friends right away. And I promised him that, and then I I needed to fulfill it, right? So we did group hangouts or dinners at my house, or we went and played kickball or we, whatever. And it was just a continual investment in people. And when people buy in and they're excited about what they do, then they invite other people. Mm. And so we began to grow this program where over five years from crusty, a small few soldiers to, we had 383 on my roster by the time I left Rock Harbor. And I, I don't say that for numbers purposes. I say that for growth and what it was, was a family. And it was truly, um, I went through a really hard time when I worked at Rock Harbor. I was really sick. I got a parasite when I lived in Uganda. And I actually ended up having to go on medical leave for a couple months. But I was in pain for a couple years, like horrible pain. And my team carried me through. And it was the first time I felt that childhood church again. Where it was like they were bringing me to the doctors. They were grocery shopping for me. They were coming Mm -hmm. over and laying hands on me and praying for me. And all of a sudden, this tiny team that was just supposed to be your Sunday greeters Mm. became like warriors in my life. And they, they believed in what we did and they, they carried the vision when I was on medical leave. Um, I had an amazing intern. She stepped in and just ran it. And 
everybody knew why they were there and what they were doing and they didn't need me anymore. And I think that's a great leader is you want to kind of work yourself out of a job where as long as you give that vision to your people, um, they're, they buy in and it's got to be an inspiring vision, right? Mm -hmm. Of like, this is what we're doing. So all to say, I think that, that the building of a community, um, was the hope and the dream of like, let's make, cause you know, Rock Harper was big and I was like, okay, let's make this feel like a mini church within a church. Mm. And so, you know, our serve team, some of them did life groups together. So they were meeting on a weekly basis outside of church. We did a ton of just fun things to build community because that's why people want to come back, right? You want it to feel like home. You want to feel known. And if your team can do that, if your volunteers create that environment, then not only are they invested, but then they bring other people. Um, and so that's that's how it grew is just this very constant like, Jesus, now what am I supposed to do? Or like, how am I supposed to change this this culture? And I remembered one day I walked out as a couple years in and people were standing around in the lobby and they were praying for each other and there was laughter again. And I was like, we did it. Nice. Not I did it, but we did it. Like they caught, they caught a vision and they, they bought in and it mm. actually changed a church environment, which was so, so cool. Wow, that's so good. I love how... I love the hope in that, you know, that it went from crusty volunteers <laughs> to a successful home feel family. Yeah. Right. And so, I mean, that that already, like right there, you moved me to divine because <laughs> but I feel like the, the, I mean, the words you were using was friendship, right? So I think what, what you had when you were little mm -hmm. was in a sense, a sense of family friendship home belonging you yep. had all of that and then kind of like god god gave you that experience so you could start replicating that in other places right so one of those was rock harbor and i mean yeah you do now that for a living yeah and you're now on christian podcast where people are learning about this and they it, this is important it is important right? and it's about i think to me it's about the friendship like why so my question is Why do you think the people that were there at the beginning were crusty? Mm -hmm. And why do you think the other people felt like this is my family, this is home, this yeah. is this is friendship? Is it that those people they just didn't want to have friends or why why are people like that? <laughs> Well, here's one of my first responses to that. And that is, I feel like our volunteers in most churches are the most unthanked and overutilized. And to me, it was my heart. Like my, I want my volunteers to know that they are important and that I see them. And if you're sick, don't come. Like not because I don't want you, but like take care of yourself. Or um, I even said, I'll go back. One of the crusty guys, if he ever listens to this, he'll laugh. But I <laughs> firmly told him he needed to take a six month sabbatical. I was like, you're burnt out. Like you're telling people don't join the team. Like you're not kind to people who walk in. And I had to have a really honest conversation with him. Wow. And I said, this serving has become your identity. And Ooh. I don't want that. Like, I want you to be fresh and excited. Not that I have to be here. And this is like exhausting to do this. And so I took, you know, I gave him six months off. And he came back to me after six months. And we had a conversation. He goes, I don't know if I'm ready yet. And mm. I said, tell me why. And he goes, it did become my identity. He goes, I just, I felt like the checklist had to be done or I wasn't succeeding. And he goes, it's been so nice to just come back and then just receive from the team, like as a guest versus being responsible. So he took a couple more months off. And then when he came, we had lunch again and he said, I think I'm ready. And I said, yeah, I think you are too. And about a year later after that, after he had been serving again, he said, that was the best gift you could have given me. Like I was burnt out and tired. And I think it's because He was, it's our loyal ones, right? We always, the percentage of like 10% of the church carries the other 90%. And so a lot of that lands on our volunteers and they're doing so much for us. If they don't feel thanked or they don't feel important, you know, a lot of times it's like you hand them and say, hey, go stand over there versus like, hey, how's your mom? Mm. How's she doing? Like, mm. how are you and your new wife? Like knowing our people is mm. so important And a lot of times we just want a warm body to stand next to the door. And that's not what it's about. And mm -hmm. so part of the transition from crusty to being thankful is caring for people's souls of like, really, I mean, I saw myself as their pastor. Like Ooh. I know them more than anybody else on staff. 
So I'm going to the hospital. I'm going to your weddings. I'm going to your baby showers. Oh you know, my gosh. I'm calling you and making sure you're okay. Um, and I had a rule with my leader. So I had 36 leaders and I did a rotation. So I would meet with two or three leaders every single week. And they knew that every other month we would meet. And they loved it. And I said, here's the expectation. If you call yourself a leader, so I had two leaders over each team, greeters, ushers, connect desk, all that stuff. If I'm meeting with you every other month, then my expectation is that you're meeting with your people every other month. So they had, let's say, a roster of 20 people. And I (laughs) had one guy who lived pretty far away. And I just said, Tuesdays, make Tuesdays your day. When you're driving home from work, you call at least one person a week. Check in. How are you doing? What's going on? And I would say the success story of knowing we made it was this one time we had a girl on our team, her appendix bursted, and she called her leader before she called her parents because that leader had checked in with her all the time. And she knew, yeah, she knew that he would pray for her. And so she called him. Mm. He called me and I was at the hospital before her parents Mm. were there. And I'm like, this is when you know. Mm, who's the real family? Yeah. Well, not only. <laughs> poor family. <laughs> no offense to the family. I mean. But it's like, but yes, truly. Who's closer yeah. to you? Because sometimes that happens. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it sounds bad and sounds kind of mean, but that's the truth. Yeah. Like sometimes your family doesn't want to be there for you to. Right. You know, they're not there. Right. You know, it's hard. It is. It's tough. But I, and I think that's where you go from somebody who's crusty to invested, right? Because mm-hmm. what happens, that story gets out and it's like, oh, my team cares for me. Oh, mm-hmm. my team knows me. Hey, my leader was at the hospital. And it's like, who doesn't want to be part of something that's like that? Mm-hmm. You know? And again, it's not about the numbers. It's about the people. And so if it's, you it's are- It's like a real friendship. It, huh? Yes. Right? Yeah. Because you're, I mean, that's your goal. You know, me as a mother, I know mm-hmm. I'm a teacher, you know, yeah. for my kids, but I want to be close to them. Yes. Almost to be a friend, but with no friends. I'm right. their mother. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Good job. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Quasi friend. Love it. That's so inspiring. I love it. So uh, tell us a little bit about like, the work that you do, like how many, I'm just curious, right? Like how yeah. many churches, like have you helped? How many like stories of success can you say? Oh, you know, like, I've, I don't know. Just like, I, I'm just curious about like, how's that work? Because I know like you were in Nashville. I mean, not necessarily on, on business, right? But I know you travel to other places yeah. to visit churches. So that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. But at the same time, I'm just curious, like how, how, yeah, how many churches have you served? How many stories of success yeah. can you share? I love that. I have to count. I'm like, how many <laughs> have I? Um, I think I've had nine so far since 2019. Um, I've done three at a time. That was my max. It was a lot, mm. um, but it was so fun because I just, you know, you're constantly going. Um, but... I would say for the most part, it's been successful. I mean, they can respond and say it hasn't, but um, <laughs> this is one of my favorite stories. So this, I was up in Danville and um, one of my, one of the greeters, we became this family, we became really close and the mom was like, so we're your favorite, cli- like we're your favorite client you've ever had, right? And I was like, there's always one of you at every church. Mm, no. <laughs> there's always like this one family <laughs> that I get super close with. Um, But I would say, you know, I've I've done follow up with all of them. Mm -hmm. Um, Usually after a year, just how are you doing? What's going on? Do you guys need anything? Um, And the response has been really good. And it's one, I think it's key that you have a staff member who is over the connection part of your church, your ministry. Um, And that person (laughs) is kind of a unicorn in a sense because they have to be super organized, right? Because people want to be communicated with. They want to know what's going on. Like it's empowering for people to have knowledge of, Mm -hmm. hey, this Sunday we're doing this, 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 and you need to be this, this, you know. So you have to be organized and communicative, but you also have to be super relational. Mm -hmm. And so a couple of clients I've actually helped hire that position and I do the interview and I ask the questions because I've done the job and I know it um, and I'm super passionate about it but you want to know that you have a person who is pastoral because that's a huge part of the job Mm. but they can't just be pastoral Mm. Um, they have to be organized because you're 
over so many of the details of a mm-hmm. Sunday that you have to have that. That would that never muscle. be my job. You're fired. Ah, safe. <laughs> I feel safe. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's fun. And it's, it's you know, it, again, I go back to like the right people at the right time. And that goes for the staff member too. Mm. And so I would say um, the churches that have the right person in place, they're really succeeding. Um, and the ones that are, you know, in process of learning or whatnot, um, it takes a little bit more time, but mm. you again, if the vision is there, if the volunteers know that they're important and why they're doing what they do, it doesn't. It does matter who the staff member is, but it's not necessarily a hundred percent. Like people mm-hmm. can catch the vision and mm. then keep it going. Like mm. for instance, when I was on medical leave, that's what happened. Like they caught the vision and they were in. Mm. So I, I'm curious. Yeah, uh, you had that experience where you show up at in the church mm-hmm. is like okay, this church is dead. <laughs> and so like, <laughs> you know, because it actually is bibl- biblical too. Yeah. You know, when when God talks to the seven churches. Yes. Right? And yep. they start telling, like, okay, you're doing great here, here, yes. here, and here. But mm. yes, you are doing this and this and that. Mm-hmm. Right? But it's a hope. Yes. Every church have a hope. Yes. But it's one in the specific is like, okay, you guys are dead. Yeah. You are doing terrible. Yeah. Like, wake up. Yeah. You know, it's a hope there too. Yeah. But then it's gonna be they're doing work. zero. Yes. Zero good. Yes. You know, like, oh my gosh. So what is better? Do you kill that church and start something else or move? And I don't know. Well, what I will say is that the um, I've had to speak up more and be bold in those conversations, which is hard. Mm. Um But so that's where I've learned like, oh, that's like something that I have to do and I have to learn. Um, Now, I can't tell a church they need to be done. That's Jesus. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) Jesus. Love it. But I will say I had one client. It was so funny. I had lunch with the pastor. I had never met him before. I didn't know his personality or anything. And I just knew that they needed help with their welcome teams. And so we went to lunch and we're sitting there chatting. And I said, because I like to kind of interview the pastor if they if they take me on to like help over a certain amount of time. And so I just said, okay, here's a question. When's the last time you thanked a volunteer from the stage? And, mm. and he just kind of like looked back and he goes, oh, this is going to be hard for me too, huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. And so when he introduced me to his staff, he said, you know, hey, I'm on board too. And by the way, this is for me too. It's not just you guys. And so it was so funny. Like a year later, I was listening, I was podcasting one of his sermons and he mentioned a volunteer in the sermon and I Ooh. screenshot it and I texted it to him. And I said, well done. <laughs> nice. Um, so it just, again, it's like it, vision does stem top down. So your pastor has to understand like, we've got to thank our volunteers. Like Rock Harbor had an incredible pastor, Mike Airy, and he, we had a um, deaf community and he would always like joke with the sign language girl or he would know like the production team guy's name or he would thank sometimes the ushers by name for like bringing Bibles. And it's just, it's those little things, mm. but it, it sets a precedent of, hey, we thank our volunteers and we appreciate them. Mm. Um and so it's like those little things where it's like if it's a really if it's a rough go at the beginning, it's kind of like, OK, like the top down. So like Jesus, give me favor in this conversation. But then I also if it's the whoever the staff member is that's over the ministry, it's like, hey, we're a team and I'm here for you. So like just know you can change a culture of a church. Like that's the power of a position of somebody who's over your volunteers is like you really do set you set the standard. Um, and that's empowering for anybody. Like, hey, do you want to change something? Like, you can you can do it. Mm. Like, sh- let me help so you. Good. Wow. Yeah, and I love how you said, I mean, for you and your own journey, when you were challenged with, wow, these volunteers need to step it up, right? It, you said you, it started with you praying, yeah. right? So I feel like that's, that's the hope, right? So I think there's hope for all churches. And I love what you mentioned, Millie, that even in the Bible, in Revelations, right? That's where... Um, God's like speaking specifically to every church and he knows every church and yeah. he knows their their good, no, their ups and downs and all of that. So that's so hopeful, right? I yeah. think and I love how you say, well, it's up to Jesus, right? <laughs> to say when when should you be done. So I would say But God can use you. 
Yes. <laughs> yeah. I would say it's not always uh, easy. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Right. Before before we wrap up, I don't know if you have a uh, last question, Milly, or if you Deb, if you want to say something like, "Oh, I didn't say this," and I think you know it's it's super relevant to this. Yeah. And then we'll move so on to the emojis. So who can hire you? Small churches, big churches, anybody. Like, anybody small can churches can have the budget to pay you. <laughs> <I> don't <laughs> they, <know>. they can. <laughs> okay. um, yeah. No. I my heart is to help. Okay. Truly. Um, and so, I actually <laughs> you'll Do love this. It, I. Go ahead. It's funny because we really need you. Well, come more on. people like you because I feel that um, it's so important. Yeah, I so, agree. So important to be reminder that who we are in Jesus and what is family mm -hmm. do for others. Yes. And when you say, this is my family, I'm doing really my job. I care for you. Mm -hmm. and, and the hard part, like sometimes people doesn't want to be helped. And it's so hard. So, yeah. you know, it's it's hard. So, yeah, like you say, yeah. God help us because we're not the ones who are going to change hearts. <laughs> nope. Right? Ooh. We cannot. But I think by praying, mm -hmm. right, and, and ask God for wisdom and what I can change yeah. in my heart to affect others. Yes. Prayer is so, like the base of it. No. I will say just anybody can hire me. And I, what I always pray, I always tell clients, right, right people, right time. And I always pray for the right client at the right time. Cause you need mm -hmm. to be ready. Um, but I literally have prayed every day at one eighteen for since 2018. So however many years that is <laughs> six years, um, God gave me the verse Ephesians one eighteen. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened to know the hope to which he has called you. And I just feel like God, you've given me this like weird gifting of, you know, pastoral and organized. You've given me these eyes that I thought people mm. could see when they would walk into a church and not everybody sees what I see. And so I know that it's a gift that he's given me and I mm. want to use it well. And so truly every day at 118, my phone goes off and anybody that knows me now will always be like, oh, 118, pray for a job. I'm like, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's beautiful because I hear you and I know that it's coming from love. Thanks. And, and the highest compliment. And, And I feel bad because I feel when I talk about when I see things wrong or bad, sometimes I talk through anger, mm. like I'm mad. So, so I feel you and I know your heart, it's Thanks. pure and it's coming from love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank so you. Sweet. That's a high compliment. It is. I, I love the church. I believe in the church and I will say I've been hurt by the church. And so mm. I still, uh, people are like, how do you keep going back? I'm like, because when you love something, you just care for it. Mm. And and I do. I love the church and I want it to do well. I want people to experience Jesus mm. and however and, I can and, help. And, and I think everyone who step on church is going to be hurt. Yeah. You know, because I have a close relationship with uh, some friends that just sh um, jump in my life and my family. Mm -hmm. Now they're part of my family. Yeah. And we had our first conflict. Mm. And I tell them, listen, this is normal. Yeah. I'm not scared. It's because our friendship, our, you know, is going to be another level. Yeah. And we need, we need, this is a proof, you know, yeah. and we need to invite Jesus and be, invite God in mm -hmm. our relationship. And it's no problem. Yeah. Just we need to grow. Right. Yeah. And, and and I feel like every time you step or oh, somebody's gonna step on the church, yes, we're gonna love you, but we're if you're so close, <laughs> yeah. if you're gonna become close, it's gonna be conflict. Mm -hmm. Because we are all are special. We all are different, right? So yeah. it's 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 normal. Yeah. When we we're not gonna agree on everything yeah. all the time. Nope, we're not. So, yeah. But we stick in it. Yes. Ooh. Okay, so the emoji time <laughs> has come. I love this. Are you ready? So we're going to go over the five emojis, starting okay. with blasphemous. You can call it shocking or whatever. It's, it's the worst idea. So basically, I always ask, in the field of work that you do, what would be the worst idea, the most blasphemous, the, the furthest away from God that you can think of? 
What would be blasphemous in the in my field? Oh. <laughs> Okay, um, think Deb. Blasphemous. That Jesus isn't the focus of the church, right? That's why we love people. That's why we welcome them. And if Jesus isn't the focus, if numbers are or our fame, it's going to fail. So good. Skeptical. What are you skeptical of when it comes to the type of work that you do? Ooh, what am I skeptical about? Um, it's hard work. And so I'm skeptical if they're actually going to do the work that it takes to get to where they got to go. Mm. And sometimes that's firing people <laughs> to get them out of the Ooh. spot. Um, sometimes that's having really honest conversations. Um, and because that's hard, they don't always do it. So I'm skeptical on that one. All right. Inspired. Where do you see hope or what gives you inspiration? People. People give me inspiration. It's like we all have a gift. We all have a purpose. Um, and we just got to find that in each other and inspire each other to be who God's called us to be. Mm, beautiful. Sweet. Ooh. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> What's holy in my position? This might be cheesy, but I feel like we set holy ground as a team, right? Like your volunteers set a holy space. Mm -hmm. So like we have to prepare our hearts, prepare our relationships to create Um, that that space and we've got to spend time with Jesus so that we're filled with the spirit so that therefore what we do is holy work not just human work and lastly divine what is the highest idea in the type of work that you do that you can think of that people meet Jesus that when they walk in it's like man I've never met anybody like you before. Like you, you feel like I've just met Jesus, how you interacted with me. All right. Party time. <laughs> Party time. So we come to the end of the episode. But first we want to say, where can people find you? Where can people go to say, I need help? Yeah. Right? How do they find you? Well, I can send you my, I have a Facebook page. It's Deb Reidman Consulting. Nice. I have a website. Guess what it is? Deb Reidman. Deb Consulting? Reidman Consulting. Okay. Com. That's me. <laughs> um, if they message you, you can send them my info. Um, and then I also just have Deb Reidman. So I'm on Facebook and Instagram as well. Love it. There we go, my friends. Thank you for joining an in-person episode of Christian Podcast, the first ever with three people in the one place. It's like This the is, Trinity. Right. We're the, the, we're the, <laughs> that's a blasphemous statement right there. The Holy Trinity right here. I love it. I love it. Um, friends, find us on ChristianPodcast.com. Make sure you like, subscribe, share this episode if it was of value. Share it with a friend, with a church, with a pastor. <laughs> yeah. Please, right? And we'll see you guys on the next one. Okay, dance it out. Come on. Ready? Ready. There we go. <laughs>